I've been waiting for this for quite a while, but I'm finally at a point in this application cycle where I can start spilling the tea, giving y'all the juicy details that I know y'all love to see. Um, yeah, we're finally unwinding and I can finally show you my AMCAS application. There's been a lot of information that I've redacted for privacy reasons, it's none of your business reasons, and just like it, it won't do you any good if you know certain information about me, <laughs> just saying. I'm typically an open book, but when it comes to my application and some of the stories that I tell, yes, I share them with admissions committees, but they, in terms of a public platform like this, not all of them are entirely my stories to tell. So that information has been redacted, but you are still going to see my MCAT scores, my GPA, all the times I withdrew from courses. Um, yeah, you're going to see all of that juicy stuff and everything that kind of made my application. This is going to be a part one video and in part two, we're going to go into my personal statement, my work and activity section and some of the schools that I applied to. So stay tuned for that. That's coming soon. Um, so without wasting any more time, let's get started. So we're going to get started right here on page one and I will direct your attention to my submission date which was on June 1st, 2020. Uh, this wasn't necessarily early, not necessarily late, it was somewhere in between. Um, I had plans to submit it the first day that I was eligible to submit this, uh, this, this application but what happened was I ran into some issues with transcripts and especially during the pandemic um, it was pretty hard to get a hold of some of my transcripts. So. June 1st was what it was, and then it didn't get processed, which you see over here, until July 21st. Yeah, that's almost a two-month turnaround time in terms of processing and actually sending out my application to the medical schools I was looking into. Um, so I could have been stressing about that, but I was stressing about my MCAT at the time, so like I wasn't stressing about this. So it is what it is, right? And then other than that, you have the identifying information, right? My birthday, if you want to send me something, is September 3rd because I'm a Virgo, you know. Um, and my birthplace, the Bronx, citizenship, things like that. Then on the next page, we've got some more biographical information um, where you have your racial, ethnic, and gender identity, all listed here, and your languages. And a little comment about languages. So when I put American Sign Language, Basic Proficiency, and Spanish Advanced Proficiency, um, it was fine and it was great and everything like that and then in the pre-med years the podcast that i'm always shouting out and y'all should really listen to if you're pre-med um they mentioned that any language you put down here be prepared to speak it in an interview right um and this this is something that i was like okay okay oh uh, spanish okay i can get by in it it's not my dominant language but it was always spoken in my household because i am half colombian um but sign language I could use some work in that. So, so I kept practicing my sign language, you know. Um, but it only happened on the interview trail one time where I did have an interviewer start speaking to me in Spanish because he saw I was Colombian and he was per Peruvian himself. So we were able to communicate with each other, but be careful, right? Don't let that catch you off guard because they will test you if they feel like it. Next page. So over here, they talk a little bit more about childhood information, now talking a little bit more about finances, and then you get to this disadvantaged section of your application. So when it came to disadvantaged information, I put yes because of some things that I have been through during my childhood. Um, and I redacted a bit of this information, most of this information, because it's not entirely my story to tell and there are other people involved in this. But I have not redacted what I've highlighted in yellow right over here which talks about like what I learned from this struggle, uh, how I've grown because of this struggle, and how it's really made me a huge part of who I am. Uh, so I was definitely wanting to include that, and if you have been through some type of disadvantage in your life and you have learned from it and you've grown from it, please include that on your application. Um, yeah, so that's all I have to say about that section. Let me know if you do have any questions about writing up your disadvantage statement, because I can help you out with that. So then over here on the next page, we have a little bit about my parents, my siblings, additional application information, my favorite part where you talk about your um, previous matriculations, institutional action, felonies, misdemeanors. Be honest about those. You'd rather be honest up front rather than them find out about something and then all of a sudden you lose everything. Yeah, so don't do that. Um, and then over here, we have my academic record, right? And this is where we start seeing all my school information. I started college classes technically when I was in high school, uh, and this is what you see highlighted in yellow over here with Marist College and Orange County Community College. These are just courses that I took in high school, but guess what? 
they want those transcripts, right? So just be prepared for that. That's all I got to say. Um, and then, as we see, I went off to Emory University, other side of the East Coast, and I got some C's. I got took some pass fail courses, and these. When I saw this transcript after I when I ordered it in I think it was 2019 2020 basically after I already graduated and I saw my freshman year grade I was like oh my gosh I ain't getting in nowhere with these C's pass fail courses more C's a withdrawal over here pass fail once again I was like I'm a goner I'm a goner but guess what I went on interviews and guess how many times things like this actually showed up or came up in conversation yeah zero they really don't care um guess who cared about it the most me right so this just goes to show that like the things that stress you out the most during this application process and that you're most self-conscious about a lot of times they don't care as much as you think they do yeah so just keep that in mind these are my courses from uh queen's college when i studied abroad i had some courses in there as well i studied abroad in costa rica it was beautiful um, and then these are my post back courses and a lot of people told me that when you take a post back you got to make sure that you get a 4.0 well guess what I got B's I got A's I got a B minus and orgo I didn't get a 4.0 and I was just fine so just keep that in mind and also remember this is my path this ain't your path um, so just because I did something okay don't mean that you'll be just fine but I'm just saying it's okay so that's that and then I've highlighted on the next page over here I've highlighted post-secondary um, because this was where I needed to send six transcripts to the a to the AMCAS um, and it was a struggle getting these transcripts and that's what I said how my application was delayed a little bit it wasn't early it wasn't late it was somewhere in between because of these transcripts bro um, yeah just contact them early especially if they're high school like college classes that you took during high school but they still got that college name attached to them Contact them early, because they be moving the slowest. Yeah, so these are all the classes and all the schools that I've attended. Now, for the part that I'm sure y'all have been waiting for. Yes, where it's time to talk about GPA. Um, and over here, uh, I've written this up, I've doodled all over this. But basically, you can see freshman and sophomore year, my GPA was not so stellar, right? We got a 2.53 and a 2.43. Yeah, that wasn't cute. And that has to do with those C's that I was getting, the B's that I was getting. Um, and it was at this point over here, my sophomore year, when I withdrew from organic chemistry, you saw that W on there, where I realized I needed to pause, take a moment, recollect myself, and reprioritize what I was doing. Because I was trying to work, I was trying to do internships, extracurriculars, classes. You know, this is a very common mistake that people make when they go into the college life for the first time and they still want to get involved in everything without first actually getting acclimated to college level coursework and their new surroundings right so I fell victim to that 100% um, so I just kind of chilled for a little bit I took time to really just get involved in things that I was passionate about and then all of a sudden I got my post back right because I finished college and I realized I don't want to do anything else right and so that's when I went to Fordham I buckled down I took all the courses and that's how I got the 3.64 so my cumulative undergraduate uh, this is like biology, chemistry, physics, and math, right? This is just like your science GPA basically was a 3.36. Not incredible, not amazing, not horrible, not terrible. Average, right? Um, yeah, so then all of a sudden we look at my all other GPA, right? And this was for my gender studies courses, which, is, which I got, which I really started diving into towards my junior and my senior year. Of college and you can see so in the credit hours here 26 28 versus 11 4 and then 45 right when it came to my post back courses that was really diving in um yeah so i ended up with 3.76 and then my total gpa was a 3.61 and when it comes to gpa and applying to schools i'm gonna be honest with y'all i didn't look at the gpa averages or medians requirements whatever they're calling them on the msar i barely used the msar i just saw a school if i liked it i applied and that was that Great. Um, and then let's talk about MCAT. So over here, you see that I took my MCAT very close to September, which was hella late. But because this application cycle was just weird, um, it, it still kind of worked out, right? So I ended up getting a 510 and y'all can see my breakdowns over here. I've already made my MCAT video and talked so much about the MCAT, so I don't want to talk about it no more. Um, except I might be making a video about how to review your exams. So, I mean, maybe I'll talk about it more later. Uh, yeah, so this is how I did on my MCAT. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's the first half of my application. And 
what happened is I didn't, I submitted to medical schools before um, I got my MCAT score back because look at this, 829. And what day was my actual application processed? What, late July, right? So I was just going in blind. But I think that that's kind of the best thing that you can do because a lot of times we get so caught up in um, numbers and oh, my GPA isn't high enough, my MCAT isn't high enough, I need safety schools, I need read schools. Find schools that you like, find schools that you vibe with, that you see these programs and it's like, ooh, that's me. Um, a lot of people will see these grades here, this 3.36 uh, BCPM GPA and, and this 510 MCAT and they'll say, I'm not going to apply to these top schools, right? That, um, but shoot your shot, apply, right? Um, that's what I did. I didn't even look at GPA requirements when I applied to medical schools. Yay, we made it! Y'all have seen the first half of my AMCAS application, and the second half will be coming soon. Yeah, but a quick aside before I say my goodbyes to y'all. When I was looking at other people's videos and how exactly they ran through their application with y'all, I saw in the comments that, like, listen, I know that pre-meds are a little bit neurotic, me included, when it comes to numbers and stats and GPA and all that stuff. But when people are sharing their information with you, being vulnerable with you, and really just allowing y'all to see the ins and outs of their applications and such, and they choose to not share their GPA and MCAT scores with you, respect the boundary that they set, okay? Um, because I personally am okay with sharing my MCAT and my GPA and all that jazz with y'all, but some people are not, and you gotta respect that. That's something that I've noticed in a few comment sections on a few different videos. So listen, pre-meds, be nice to people who are sharing this information with you and respect those boundaries. Okay, anyways, Sears Ash is gone. And now I just want to really say thank you so much for joining me on this video. And I hope that you join me in my next video as I talk about my personal statement, my work and activity section. I'm so glad I could finally share this information with y'all. It feels like it's been forever. Anyways, catch me next time. Again, thank you for joining. And if you haven't subscribed, you can subscribe down below. And I'll love you forever. Okay, bye.